I love that you start the watch in the bag with the golf ball. You know, the golf ball, so often we see these things as the afterthought, oh, and here's the golf ball you use. You use these because of that. I'm honored to have my good friend Ian Frazier from TXG with me. So the reason I have Ian here is your home base for me, meaning like you've been through multiple bags with me, you know my specs, you yep. know all that stuff. So what a better person to have to do what's in the bag than with Ian. So first thing I'm gonna start with is, is the golf ball, which I play the Chrome Soft X. I've tried the, the LS a little bit. I know you guys did some videos on mm -hmm. it, but for me, I, I need spin. I'm not, a, yeah. I'm not a high spin guy. I like playing with spin. So I go Chrome Soft X with the triple track. Um, once again, it's sort of our middle ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like it just because I can, you know, if I take speed off of a shot, it holds its spin, it's fast off the driver, all that stuff. So I love that you start the watch in the bag with the golf ball. It's the glue, because, man. Yeah, and that's yeah. the only constant of the whole thing. Right. You know, the golf ball, so often we see these things as the afterthought. Oh, and here's the golf ball I use. You use these because of that. Correct. Not the other way around, yeah. right? So the golf ball is, is and guys, there's, there's a real lesson to be learned for you guys in amongst that. Really pay attention to what ball you play well with first, then build your set around that. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a golf ball first, club second uh, type it's guy. the way that it should be. Yeah. So then we'll get into the driver. Shout out to the farms over there in Rancho Santa Fe. They take good care of us. So interesting. You and I were talking about this a little bit. So my gamer driver is the Rogue ST Max D, which is, it's like, it's got a D on it. It's like an anti-slice driver, yeah. right? But um, you've seen me hit balls enough. I kind of pop out of it. I'm swinging really hard into out. And what I've found with this driver, if I only want to hit one shot, this is the driver to do it. It starts right, it falls left. And uh, so I have it uh, at nine set to uh, minus one. So it's an eight degree driver. It's got a high MOI, so it yeah. launches high. CG's really deep on it, so it's not like the eight degrees becomes unlaunchable no. or anything like that. And yesterday when we were on the range, your shot shape is straight, and if you miss it, it falls right. Correct. So this takes that and goes, it either goes straight or it falls left. Yes. It just shifts that over a little bit. Well, for most drawers of the golf ball, if you get really honest with them, everybody loves to say they fear left. Yeah. If you draw it, you fear right. You fear the big the no spin shot to the right. Definitely. So. Um, I'm an Aventus uh, Blue TR6X. I don't tip the shaft at all, which is something I've been messing with, not tipping yep. them at all. Um, and it's just a 45 inches. What are your thoughts on not you know, tipping versus no tipping? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a no tip guy uh, when it comes to an OEM sleeve. Um, I just I select the shaft around not tipping it. Right. So whether I'm X, whether I'm TX, it's around the characteristics of that shaft and it not being tipped. It's just the way I've, I've, I like to play it. Three wood gets tipped half an inch, five yep. wood gets tipped an inch. Yep. I know you're very similar Same with that. Same thing, yeah. Yeah, and, and TR obviously, that's that's new very, very recently. Yep. New in the bag, and, and we're gonna get into it with the fair woods, but the new kind of more like event is black in the tip very much a vent is blue mid and, and top half. Which you get that blue feel with the black tip, which is kind of the idea of that shaft. Exactly. So it's the middle ground between black and blue for all you Ventus fans out there. Right. Uh, then I go to a three wood, which is a newer three wood, and I've been playing around with a few, but this is the one that I've really liked the most. So it's not one you can buy. It's a triple diamond, three HL. Um, it's kind of a funny story. This was actually Maverick McNeely's hmm. three wood that he tested, and uh, for whatever reason, he wanted one with a little less loft. So. This is 16.5 at 15 and a quarter, I think. Right. Um, and then I just go right into Ventus Blue 7X. Um, and for me, and we talked about this yesterday, three wood for me is like off the ground. It's got to carry 240, 245. If I rope it, I can hit it 250, 255 off the ground. But I don't need it to do more than that. You no. know, I don't want I don't want a 273 wood or or anything like that. So this one gets it up. It spins plenty. Uh, and that's all I needed need to do. So yeah, no, that was on a that was on a really good sort of trajectory for you yesterday. Twelve launch, thirty two to thirty five hundred on the spin, really really nice. So, so so far so good on the three wood. Obviously those are hard ones to find. So this is one that's been in the bag for a while. Mm -hmm. Another one you can't buy. I'm sorry folks. It's a <laughs> Epic Speed Triple Diamond Five T. So if you look. If you look at the shape of this head, it's actually a very old school yeah. idea, but it's got a ton of camber in the sole. It's almost like a wedge. And the idea behind this is I really hit down, get steep on five wood shots. The problem with that is that the more you hit down, the more it spins. This head's designed so the harder you hit down, the, it actually kicks spin down. Yep. So this is the five wood that John Rom plays. Um, and I've had, this is the second one I've had. My club's got stolen, so this is the, the new one. 
Um, but I go and just right into Ventus uh, Blue 8X on yeah. this. It's so a little shorter. Club gets short. Are you up? At, so what's this guy at? 40? 41 and a half. 41 and a half. Yeah, interest. it's a little shorter. So this is a 225, 230 carry club yeah. for me. Um, and if I roast it, I can get it out 235. And this this sole design, this shape being you know much much more of a, an aggressive camber brilliant out the rough as well yes so if you need to get down and after it when it's sitting there so the the very flat boxy shapes you know great on the fairway if you're that sweeper that just picks it off the fairway that's amazing right but when you do like to dig it out and going a little bit shorter you're you're promoting a little bit of a steeper angle yes. of attack into it by which is that why i went short line. yeah yeah we sit that shaft up a little bit allows us to get down into the the, the turf a little more I can see that being a great little versatile club for I, you. I, I'm in love with that head. Okay. Uh, so then we'll go into the irons, and I have, I got some new irons. So I'll just pull out the five irons. So I'm in the Rogue ST Pro, and I just put some new shafts in uh, literally like two, uh, yesterday. Um, so I'm in the Dynamic Gold, True Temper Dynamic Gold X100 Tour Issue Mids, which I've been an X1 or an S4 player for years. Yep. Um, and the one knock I always had on X100 was four, five, and six irons tend to come out. They come out high, but they come out with no spin. So right. this is designed to kick it up a little bit mm -hmm. and then also kick up the spin a little bit yeah. um, without losing that flex and that, that dynamic gold feel. So um, I haven't hit the whole set yet. I've hit the seven and the eight iron, and so far I love them. I mean, yeah. It opens up the options for you, that shaft, because when it comes to an iron like Rogue ST Pro, the lofts are a little bit on the stronger side. You've got them a hair weaker. Yep. That golf ball, it, the golf ball is progressively becoming a little bit less spin. The evolution of the dynamic gold line is to allow more people to still play the shaft they love right. while all these progressive things are happening right. in the golf industry, whether it be loft, CG location, golf ball evolution. So the, the mid being a sort of next evolution. And we've seen shafts and true temper that, that kick it up a little sure. bit, elevate but really harder to get the tour players into that You sacrifice the spin way. too, yeah, yeah. When, when you get it up like that. Exactly, so yeah, I can see a lot of guys moving to that, that, that like the lower spin ball. Maybe they're, they like a specific ball off the woods and, and they'll, they'll kind of use this to help kick that spin up a little bit. Well, the other thing I didn't want to do is, um, you know, these heads are, you know, they're, I call them like Apex 21 Bs. That's kind of mm -hmm. where they sit. They're just as fast as Apex 21. They're just as forgiving, but they have more of a player shape. I was in the TCBs for a while. And what I liked about them is I'm still getting the ball speeds off the miss hits, and I'm still getting everything. But since I play now a spinnier shaft, I play a spinny ball. So that, in combination with the stronger lofts, now I'm just getting a little bit of extra distance. I'm yeah. not I'm not losing spin. I'm not losing anything else. Just just gaining something, uh, which has been which has been pretty awesome. So I do go about a degree, degree and a half week on all the irons. Mm -hmm. So my pitching wedge is at 45. Um, but I don't sleep on the Rogue ST Pros. These things are amazing. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, I mean, we talked about it yesterday, and I said to you, I mean, I love how soft they feel when you say, I know, and they're not even forged. I know they're, you know, they're cast they're irons. Not, but it's just, I think when you move the mass around the head the way they have with the tungsten uh, in the head, I think that allows them to sort of stretch the mass out a little bit so when you hit it in the middle it's such a Still solid soft, soft feel yeah, yeah. Uh, and i think that's very unique to, to these clubs and they spin too i mean which is one of the cool things i notice about these uh, shafts in combination with the irons is i don't like hitting hard eight nine pitching wedge mm -hmm. but the problem with that is you know back in the day the softer you swing the more spin you lose so yeah. now with chrome soft x and this shaft now i if i do take if i do take speed off of a shot from you know maybe an eight iron from 145 it's still cutting through the wind, but it's still spinning. Exactly. Which I, 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 I love that. I love that. So then I go into a, this is an interesting one. <laughs> I go into a TCB A wedge, mm -hmm. which is at 50 degrees. And there's a weird trend, kind of a cool trend going on on tour. So we have a lot of our staff that are slowly converting into the A wedge yeah. uh, instead of a 50 degree like wedge wedge. Uh, Sam Burns has done it. He did it at the beginning of the year. And what all these players are doing is they're going on like track man combines or whatever. And what they're noticing is that Spin, spin comes down a little bit, a couple hundred RPMs, launch goes up a little bit, but the dispersion gets really, really tight. And on a full shot from, you know, for these guys, 120, 125 yards, that's money maker territory. And they they found out they were sacrificing money yeah. uh, by doing it the other way. And, you know, Sam Burns, Trackman Combine stats have been amazing. And uh, just on tour, his numbers have been better. So I go to that. I don't ever chip with a 50. It's always a full shot club. Yeah. It's like a 110 shot for me. 
and uh, I, I've loved it. And that's allowing data to drive the decision, you know, the, the decision making uh, sort of around our bag, our, our bag set composition. So the guys are going, well, okay, it's not it's not the launch and spin I'm used to off the gap wedge, but it's the scoring, it's the proximity. Yeah, the computer's telling you something Absolutely. else. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we know our make percentage when we kind of get outside, you know, eight feet, it, it, it significantly drops right. down. So, you know, every foot that we can get closer to the hole is going to mean lower scores, better uh, from a strokes gain perspective. Well, one of the things that Sam said, which is interesting, is like it's, it's where, on uh, what side of the hole is he hitting his shots? So he's like, you know, with a 50 degree wedge, if I miss it a little bit or I don't hit my line correctly, I, was, I would always end up you know, constantly on one side of the hole with yeah. this. My miss is maybe right side of the, I'm, I'm, I'm missing it on the same side mm -hmm. every single time. Right. Uh, which I thought was kind of a cool story. So then Very we go cool. into my other wedges. I go 54, 60. So I go into the Jaws Forged. Um, these are all C grinds. We got some cool stamping Taranto did for me. So I'm a big Lebowski fan. So he put the dude abides on that one. And I am a Star Wars freak, so he put This Is The Way from Mandalorian on there for me. <laughs> uh, but this is actually kind of cool. I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but um, they have a grind that they'll do for on tour called the Sunshine Grind. And it's kind of hard to see, but what they'll do on a C grind is they'll take a little bit of relief, add a little bit of bounce to the leaning edge, and then take a little bit off the heel. Yep. Um, the reason they do that for players that like to hit shots around the green with an, constantly with an open face, mm -hmm. But they also want to have a little bit of relief for when those players want to square it up. Square it up, put it back in the stance, and, and just have basic pitch shots. Right, yeah. and so what they'll do, and this wedge has a ton of weight up, you know, the T-grind and, and this particular wedge have a mm -hmm. lot of weight up top, gets the CG up. So if you like to hit those low, darty spinners, yeah. which is, I grew up playing in Seattle, that's all you play. Uh, this has been an, an unbelievable wedge, and I have uh, two issue S400s in here. In both of those? In both of those, yep. Okay. And 54 into 60, so just a standard C. Yep. Beautiful. Yep. So that's, you know, for gapping, I go, you know, 115, 120 with that one, 105 yards with that one, and I really don't care how far my 60 goes. I don't yeah. ever, I mean, who cares? Um, so then we'll go into the putter. Sort of becoming my favorite club. <laughs> um, I have the uh, the Toulon Daytona, um, which just came out. I've had this for since Vegas uh, for the uh, CJ Cup. Um, Joe Toulon kind of put it together for me, and... I don't, I, I don't know what it is about it. I don't know if it's the S neck or, or what it is, but I'm just, I'm hitting my lines. It rolls really, really well, and I like how that putter, if you put it on the ground, it sits into the ground. Yeah. It sits re very, very flush to the ground, which is uh, something I've always liked. So I, I'm in love with that putter. Yeah. So you're, you're a no alignment guy on top. There's, there's no dots. There's no well, lines. Well, no, I have. Just, I use triple track, but then I also have this, these lines here. I don't need a lot you in don't the need middle. The, the, kind of, the white line. You just, you just use the kind of bar here. Just the bar, yeah. Okay. And uh, you know I'm a I'm a streaky putter. You yep. know in my bad days I'm actually still pretty good. So um, you know I was in two ball ten for a while, and I've tried a bunch of different models like the seven, the, the OG seven S, yep. and I've, I've had a lot. But for whatever reason on Quintech, I this toe releases the most consistently for me. And um, when I do hit it out of the toe or the heel, I'm Super, still getting yeah. the ball speed out of it Super too. Super stable, keeps yeah. that impact ratio up. Yep. Are you a half set of offset guy? Half shaft of offset guy? A little bit. Okay. This is uh, it's an interesting grip. We we yeah. offer this one at TXG. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your your thoughts on this. So the cool thing on the truck is there's they have every grip you can think of. Yeah. Even I mean they have a everything. A bunch you probably never thought of. Yeah, yeah. So you know I was looking. You get bored on the truck sometimes. I was looking around at putter grips and I'm like I just kind of saw this thing and I'm like wow this you know I put cross head and I'm like this actually looks pretty awesome and I'm always looking for a grip that I can lock. I like sharp corners, so I like to yep. lock this part of my hand mm -hmm. in. Into the lifeline. And this one's done it better than, than anything. Like, I, I feel like that, that right hand is, is pretty locked in. This one, I really don't care. It's, yep. it's, cause I, I'm a cross-handed, right-hand dominant putter. Right. So uh, I need to feel all the pressure in here. And for whatever reason, this grip has been just amazing for that. So. Yeah. Guys, that's the Garson Quad Tour. Uh, obviously four-sided, but like Johnny said, very flat, kind of wide front, so fits really nicely into the lifelines and just it feels very secure once it's in there. Yeah. I think some of the putters that, that are kind of maybe a little smaller in shape but have the flat front, they don't quite, you almost feel like you have to grip onto right. them a little bit. And we want to loosen the grip up a little bit for putting and, and allow ourselves to feel, you know, feel the putter in our hands. That's how we get that distance control. Yeah, you want, always want to feel, and this is something I talked to Joe Toulon about when it comes to putter grips, you always want to feel like you can just naturally grab it and it goes to the same spot in your hand every time. And some putter grips do that, some don't. Yeah. Um, like if you talk to John Rom, he's got a, 
like a pistol grip with a bunch of tape under it. Like it's built up like with five or six wraps of tape, but he has a very weak putter grip. So he automatically just turns his hand over and it sits right in his, mm -hmm. right in his lifeline every time. Yeah. So, um, but that's the uh, bag, yeah. For now? For now, for now. yeah. Until, as, I mean, until something happens. Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the, there's pros and cons to, to your job. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from a, from a bag perspective is, you see something and, and it can catch your eye, shiny things, you know, catch your eye every every week in there. Yeah. But, you know, this is a pretty solid uh, setup. I mean, I know you've tried different things with regards to having TCBs. Mm -hmm. You tried a, an experiment with weak apexes yeah. last year. Like this to me, you found your middle ground. That's the having... middle ground, yeah. This is the best of both worlds. Yeah. And I, you know me, I love to combo a set. And yeah. anytime I can have an iron set that's four through pitching wedge with no comboing, love it. that says a lot. Yeah. So, you know, these launch high, they spin, they do everything I need them to do. So, uh, but that's uh, Ian Frazier. Thanks, man. You I got appreciate it, you. You're the best. You got it. Uh, if you have any more questions, go to callawaygolf.com, World of Wonder website. I want to thank my boy Ian Frazier for being on with me. It's like the best what's in the bag having my boy with me. <laughs> uh, but we're out of here.